Rodney Nigel Mayfield. Straight butter dating and relationship talk. Now that's straight butter. Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you today. Today's topic is how are men from fatherless homes affected in future love relationships? Let's do it. Welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel if you've not already done so, and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. Again, the show topic is how are men from fatherless homes affected in future love relationships? Now, as you can see, we got a special video guest in the house on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Welcome to the show. Introduce yourself to my audience and let them know where you're from. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Hicks. I am from Buffalo, New York. And Rodney and I have known each other since 18 years old, even though we're from different parts of the country. So I'll let you guess how we met. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, let's welcome... Dr. Mike Hicks to the Straight Brother Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Welcome to the show, Mike. I'm glad Thank you were able much. to come on, man. You're Thank welcome. you, brother. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Uh, how, you're welcome. Now, how's the weather up there in the great state of Buffalo, New York, Mike? Uh, well, you know, we had a, a blizzard, our traditional annual blizzard that we have around December or January. Um, uh, we we had a few casualties because it was it was pretty rough. But uh, God kept us, kept everybody upright, and uh, we got through it. So about a week later, right now, it's in the 40s. So all that snow has melted away. So thank God for that. All right. Well, 40 degree temperature kind of feels like summertime. I, I definitely know how you feel because it's been uh, extremely cold, unusually cold down here in Memphis, man, over the past uh, couple of weeks, like getting to like one degrees. And, uh, you know, so for the past couple of weeks, man, we have really been going through it, but we have a temporary reprieve right now from those cold temperatures, at least uh, momentarily. So I definitely understand. Amen. Well, well, Mike, before, before we get started, uh, do you have a business that you're involved in or anything that you would like to promote uh, with my audience before we get started, such as a website or a, a social media channel, et cetera? Yeah, we are. I have a, a, a podcast with a partner of mine called The Underway Podcast. It's uh, various topics that we speak about, anything from politics to sports to family uh, to worldviews and things of that nature. So The Underway Podcast can be found on YouTube. Uh, and uh, yeah, chime in and, and check us out. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Well, let's chop it up, man. Uh, let's get let's into go. it. So, Mike. What are your initial thoughts about the topic for today's show? How are men from fatherless homes affected in future love relationships? Well, I think the main thing is uh, you remember being a child and you, you know, you're a parent yourself. Uh, the children imitate what they see every day, good or bad. So uh, if you're not experiencing the relationship of, uh, between a man and a woman the way God intended, uh, you can have skewed views by what the world puts into your head, or you can just have ignorance overall with just not knowing how to interact with uh, the female gender, you know. But uh, God has intended us for, to be together and, and be fruitful and multiply. We can't have it any other way. So a lot of times young men are lost based on the fact that they did not see examples in their home. So when they become adults and pursue relationships, they have trouble. They struggle. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I agree, man. I think having that stability in the home is definitely essential and, and it's a, a, a very necessary 
uh, not just in this time, but the time past. But it seems like we are still in that same cycle uh, of a majority father's home. Now, Mike, uh, were you a product from a home with or without uh, your father present? Uh, my mother and father were married when, when I was conceived. Uh, my sister came along three years after that. They were still married, but shortly thereafter, uh, they sided, you know, they uh, departed, parted ways. And, uh, you know, he, he chose another life. My father was a, a very uh, handsome, smart guy, uh, but he had a, a, an allure, you know, to the streets. And he chose to stay in the streets. So therefore, from the time I was maybe five years old, he was never really in my life beyond that. Okay. Were you able to uh, were you able to get some type of relationship uh, with your father uh, uh, any point in your life? Uh, kind of rehash things, uh, try to make amends uh, between you and him. You know what I think happens, Rodney, is when you go astray. There's a certain time period that a relationship is salvageable, you know. But if it's not, uh, a lot of times time divides us so greatly that you don't want anything to do with it. My uh, my father came back, he, he had relocated to Dallas, Texas. Uh, he was an electrician, so he was a smart guy, he was a skilled guy, uh, moved to Dallas, and later on in his life, he returned to Buffalo. Now, by that time, I was in my early 20s. Uh, I just recently, you know, uh, been discharged from the military. Uh, had a good paying job. I was kind of on my own, you know, like we all aspire to do. And uh, we we struck up somewhat of a rapport uh, because he was staying with my grandmother, who is his mom. Uh, and I was always close to her. So I couldn't help but run into him when I went over there. So we talked and things like that. But by that time, Rodney, I had truly become my own man. And I was fortunate enough to have enough positive male role models in my life leading up to that point where he was, his services were no longer needed. You know, so I was always respectful because I do follow the word of God, respect you, your mother and father, and your days will be long in this earth. So uh, just because I don't like you doesn't mean I don't have to respect you. You know, so uh, as time went on, it, it I, I softened my heart to, to actually feel sorry for him because you know as well as I do, and all parents know there's nothing more rewarding than seeing your child grow into a great man or great woman and knowing you had a hand in it. So my heart kind of bled for him not being a part of the man I became. Okay. Well, yes, I understand that viewpoint uh, uh, for sure, man. Uh, are you currently married? And if so, how long have you been married, Mike? <laughs> I am married. Uh, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Uh, this July 2024 will be 20 years that I've been in holy matrimony with my wonderful wife. Awesome, man. Awesome. That, that's a blessing because uh, a lot of relationships don't even get to that point. Uh, in fact, uh, over 51 percent of people who get married end in divorce, whether they are Christians or non-Christians. So uh, it's definitely not easy, but you have to be able to compromise with one another and try to keep that thing together because the enemy is definitely trying to divide you at every uh, point in your marriage. So I definitely Absolutely. congratulations, if, man, if, at 20 years. And if I may uh, add, Ryan, now, if, I, if I may add before we go on, you're talking about the marriage thing, right? Yeah. What's going on out here in the world today, Rodney, I, I'd be crazy not to be married. You understand me? I mean, yes, <laughs> the people don't have values. That's men and women. It's not just one particular group that don't have values. Uh, there are no real genuine signs of love out here. It's a materialistic world. People want things from you. So like the old folks say, you better hold what you got if you got something. So that's why I am, man. So and even though, like you mentioned, the struggles of it, it's tough, man. Marriage is it's no walk in the park. But when you consider what I just said, all the work you put into something, why would you throw that work away? You understand? So uh, I'm staying. I'm staying where I'm at, brother. God willing. Okay. And then uh, you may know this artist, but uh, there's an old blues artist that said, uh, "It's cheaper to keep her." Now, who, who song that? Do you know? You heard this song oh, before, right? Yeah, that, that, that's. 
the blues whaler Johnny Taylor. Of course I know who that is. Come on, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper to keep her. Now, now, do you have children? Yes, we, we've been blessed with one daughter. She's 18 years old. She's a freshman in college at uh, Fredonia University, uh, about an hour away from Buffalo. Uh, she's doing well. Thank oh. God. Great, great, great. Hey, man, uh, it's, it's a blessing to uh, be able to uh, be a father in the home of your child and then see them go off to college because uh, your labor is not was not in vain. So that's a great thing. Uh, you know, I have two daughters myself, bro. So I'm a girl dad also. So I definitely Got know right. how it is. And uh, my oldest daughter graduated from the University of Auburn uh, three years ago. Uh, she's a journalist. And my youngest daughter is in her final year at the University of Memphis. Uh, she's 21 years of age. So uh, I'm proud of both of them. So I definitely understand. Congrats. So, so Congrats. Mike, let's get, thank, you, thank you. Let's get to the serious business. Mike. Why do you think Blacks or African Americans have no fathers in 65 to 67 percent of households? Well, it depends on how far you want to go back historically. Um, you know, and, and I'm not one, let's understand, before I even go on this spiel, I'm not one to really lean on the effects of slavery in our present day too much. But I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that uh, families were broken up uh, quite often during slavery with the man being the, the, the worker basically in the field uh, being bought and sold so being separated from his wife and children so many times um, although 100 years out of slavery so basically about 1865 to 1965 uh, black people had the highest marriage rate in the country bar none we had the most married households. We had the most fathers in the homes. Uh, we had self-sustainable communities. Uh, one of the big mistakes about uh, integration, and then I would never aim at anybody like Dr. King or anything like that. But I think that the emphasis on integration as a people uh, made us split up, not depend on each other, not becoming a self-sufficient entity like so many other groups are. So when you also, I mentioned that 100 years, Rodney, when you're talking about, let's say, 1965, President Johnson's, uh, you know, welfare state, things of that nature, you know, where uh, a woman could not collect the, the, the goods given to her by the government if a man stayed in that home. So you're also talking about a time where unemployment was on the rise. So black men uh, in a kind of a twisted way, we're looking out for their families by not being in the homes. But eventually, you stay away from something too long, you're going to stay gone. So there are so many effects. Yeah. And so those are just two examples that I'm giving you. But there are so many reasons that uh, there are so many fatherless homes in our community. But those are two that are, were really uh, the latter was really the most impactful for somebody my age. I was born in 1967. So that was around the time that they implemented that stuff and i praise god that my mother was never a welfare recipient she worked every day she was a registered nurse she was a professional woman so i was fortunate in that aspect all right all right well hey man i i, I see your viewpoint and uh you know listen uh there's uh, some aspects of what you said man that i uh wholeheartedly and 100 percent uh, agree with and you know i think uh that stuff is continuing even today with that mindset um, what's the reason why the perpetual state of fatherless homes, especially in the black community, is passed down generationally in our community more than uh, other communities? Well, I think it's, a, it's like anything else, Rodney, it's a matter of choice. You know, um, it's easy to kind of latch on to something uh, and, and hitch a ride as opposed to really staking out your own journey. So for me, uh, not having a father figure in the home the majority of my life, I just remember the anger that I that I had inside. I remember how it kind of affected me in school. Uh, it affected me in relationships. I just had this this boiling inside of me uh, of resentment and, and like I said, constant frustration about not having uh, a father in the home to be able to teach me some of the basic principles of boyhood going into manhood. So. There are a lot of people, put it this way, Rodney, you know, you're from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, which is a city. 
southern city, but it's a city no less. You know families where it's been nothing but ratchet behavior as long as they've been on the planet. Do you agree or do you disagree? Of course, yeah. That's a learned behavior, correct? Yeah. Right. Exactly. So then you look at, yeah, so you, you imitate, know what I'm you, talking you, you, about. You imitate what you see. Absolutely. Most so, right. at the same yeah. time, you've seen solid, good families too. Is that right? Correct. Right. right. So, what happens is, not only is it learned behavior, but it's the easy way out. It scares people. Commitment scares people. Hard work scares people. And being a father, those are two qualities that you have to have. So a lot of people are very scared of those two uh, uh, descriptions of fatherhood that I just mentioned. But at the same time, Rodney, me personally, I never wanted, and this is and this is serious when I say this, brother. I never wanted a son or a daughter, whoever I was fortunate enough to uh, give life to, to ever hate to ever have that anger that I had. You understand? So with me, the old adage, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, correct? Yeah. So so that's where yeah. I was at with it, man. So as far as what other people do, uh, I can only attribute it to uh, 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 my theory of it's to, it was easier to walk, to run away than to stand there and be a man that supports your family. Okay. Uh, back to that analogy that you just made. Now, uh, I would think that you had male friends uh, mm -hmm. in Buffalo, New York, that had a father in the home, correct? Some did. Did some you? Did. Okay, some some did. Now, the ones that you were close to, uh, did you sort of envy them when they had both mother and father in the home? When you said your father was uh, not around? Well, I don't think it was too much of an envious thing. What? What, I put it this way, what what made it not turn into envy were the fathers understanding my situation and young men's situation like me and them embracing us, them chastising us, them raising us basically alongside their sons who were our friends. So I think that okay. kind of shielded me from the resentment aspect. But I, I will say this, when, when I joined the military, and I don't know if this is a particular reason. I think I need to do some research about this. But a lot of the brothers from the South um, still had fathers in their households a lot of times. You know, and a lot of the brothers from the North, the New Yorkers, the dudes from Philly, Detroit, Chicago, it seems like we didn't. Now, I don't know if that had any kind of, you know, scientific fact or, you know, anything to it. But I always noticed that. And I've always admired that about my brothers from the southern states because you know how we used to go make phone calls and call home and you know at the same time and stuff like that i would hear my shipmates say hey now, hey mama where daddy at you know what i mean and then they talking to their father man and now that made me a bit envious and i'm like man i wish i could do that you understand what i'm saying yeah so yeah but i think my envy was kind of softened by the fact that these men reached out and tried to help you you understand what i'm saying so that kind of softened the the anger. Yeah, hey, is your father still living, Mike? No, my father died in 1995. Wow, okay, that was a long time ago, okay. Now, do you uh, think that, do you wish that you could have uh, repaired the breach before he passed away? Do you think of anything uh, that you could have done to help to repair the breach between y'all relationship? Well, no, because I didn't damage it. Okay. Okay. You understand? So, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, I got you. So, do you think a boy that grows up in a fatherless home, but has a father that is an active participant in that in his weekly activities, and also pays a significant plays a significant role in his rearing, would be negatively impacted compared to a child whose father was completely absent from that home? No, of course not. Of course not. You know, if you have a father that's present, as we know, let you just don't reside with you, you're winning. Especially if he's a loving, caring yeah. father. Because as we, yeah, we know, relationships don't always work. We know that, Rodney. We've been in enough of yeah. them. They don't always work. You understand? But yeah, if you yeah, have sure. a responsibility and you call yourself a man, 
Nobody should reward you for things you're supposed to be doing. But a father who is active in his child's life, whether he resides at that child or not, is better than no father at all. I, I concur, man. I definitely concur. Now, Mike, somebody posed a question to me that they wanted me to ask you. Uh, we discussed it very vigorously yesterday uh, via the phone, and they wanted me to ask you this question to see what your viewpoints were when they saw uh, the title of this show. Do you think a man who impregnates a woman out of a lapse of judgment by both of them, you think he should marry her because he impregnates her? No, if he, if he doesn't love her, because sex has nothing to do with love, as we all know. So if he doesn't love her, uh, of course he shouldn't marry her. Um, if he loves her, I, I think it would be in the best interest of the future of that child uh, and, and the uh, mental state of both okay, male and female. Uh, that it would benefit the child if they did. But they don't have to. If you're talking about should they or have to, I don't believe he should or she should. I just don't. Well, the, 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 the issue that she was having is that mm -hmm. if he slept with her and impregnated mm -hmm. her, he should uh, do the godly thing and marry her. Now, for me, I think it would be a noble deed. But you and I know, Mike, being in the military, uh, we know how men are, period, whether in the military or outside the military. They sleep with a lot of women. And a lot of women sleep with a lot of men. And so the thing is, uh, because he had a lapse in judgment, should he marry this woman because he had a lapse in judgment? Now, if this man is a Christian, he needs to first repent. And number one, if, if he can't control his lustful desires, he definitely needs to be married. The Bible says, uh, if you can't control your lustful desires, it's better to marry than to burn in lust. That's the right thing to do. But we know everybody doesn't do mm -hmm. that. Uh, can the child grow up in a home without the father being there, but having a father who wants to participate and have an active role in his life? Can that child still grow up uh, and be a productive, uh, productive child in society, productive uh, man in society when he or she grows up, a man or woman in society? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I mentioned to you, uh, my father was around, but I had so many positive male role models who shaped and molded me. So absolutely, you have a chance. But let's go back to the initial uh, question that you posed. Um, you know, the person who posed it to you, um, if they uh, put God in it, you know what I mean? It, it was in. It was like the, the after effect, you putting God in it. Because like I said, had you put God in it in the beginning, there would be no fornication. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Therefore, you could, you, you could discuss having a future together and possibly being married and things of that nature. But of course, we're talking about the flesh. You know, the flesh is a monster and we know how that goes. So like you said, um, yes, the noble thing to do, no question about it, um, would be to marry that woman. But is that man or that woman going into a loveless marriage because it was just based on creating another life through sex? So there's so many layers to it, Rodney. There's so many layers to it. But me personally, yeah, I, I would prefer that everyone actually did, had did that. Because I guarantee you if they'd done that, we wouldn't have the chaos by our youth out in these streets nationwide like we do. I concur. I definitely concur with that. So do you think a child can grow up with the father in the home but still suffer the same negative effects of a father not being in the home due to the father in the home being a non-participant in rearing uh, that child? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've had friends who had fathers in the home, but they were only there physically. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They, they just felt their, their job was to just bring home the bacon. You know, because you're talking about yeah. a city like Buffalo, it was a, a big time union city. A lot of factories, a lot of union jobs, things like that. So a lot of these daddies had them good paying jobs. They felt their only job was to take care of the bills. You understand? Put some money in mama's pocket yeah. and just work and do their thing. So yeah, you can still have a father in the home physically, but even if he's not there there emotionally, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, I, I concur, man. I, I know people personally who actually uh, despise their father because even though he was there, uh, they don't have a relationship, you know. And it's just like nope. you talking about eighteen years 
uh, of being around somebody is basically, like you said, providing uh, the bill money, uh, but not having a direct or personal relationship with the child. And so, yeah, you can actually uh, have the same negative effects as a father not being in the home, physically. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, how do you, how does growing up without a father affect a boy, in your opinion, as it relates to future love relationships? Well, because of the uh, witnessing of interaction. Um, yeah. Like even me, even me. Um, my wife and I, we, we dated for a while when we were younger, things like that. And so we get into, you know, the spats that you get into, you know, the little back and forth that you get into. Um, and there were times, Rodney, that I wish I had a reference to how to get out of this situation without engaging. You understand? Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you got to stand on business, male and female. You know, if somebody's out of line in a relationship and need to get checked, get checked. But, you know, you check them with love and respect. But my problem was, is I had to really kind of walk around in the dark and how to navigate uh how to get along you know with with my wife or my you know my girlfriend at the time um based on not knowing you know just remember the bracelets everybody used to wear wwjd yeah what would, what jesus, would jesus do, do? <laughs> yeah i was always doing the what would daddy do you understand what i'm yeah. saying because I've, I've seen friends of mine who are pretty much spitting images, imitations of their father when it comes to uh, domestic life. You know, I got friends who whose dads didn't do a lot of arguing, but if they, if mom and dad had a disagreement, they would talk about it in private. You know, not a lot of yelling, you know, a lot of chair throwing and all that madness that a child can emulate, thinking that's the way to resolve an argument. So, believe me, bro. I mean, I, even into my marriage, I struggled um, with how to. Uh, bridge certain gaps, you know, and, and try to make peace without participating in the chaos. So, yeah, man. I mean, the father is an ultimate role model. A father is uh, a boy's first hero and a girl's first love. So, I think it's very important for a father to be in a home and to be active and to be supportive and to have a a, a, a positive impact on his children and even his wife. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. I agree. You know. Uh, my mom and dad were never married, but my dad came around a that. couple of times a week. So, so I knew, I knew my dad and, and we had a good relationship. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I led my dad to Christ 45 days before he died at age 92. Cause my dad was not saved. And if he would have died without Amen. the Lord, he would have died all and went to hell. And, and my, my Amen. main prayer to God was that God used me as a conduit by which all of my family members were not saved. Can, can get saved and give their life to Christ uh, through me uh, sharing the gospel and, and try to be an example. Now, I'm not a perfect example, but Jesus Christ is the perfect example. But I was able to lead my dad to Christ and we had a good relationship. My dad, I got letters that he uh, wrote me when I was in, in the military. And, uh, and so I'm one of those exceptions that, you know, uh, I've never been in trouble with the law. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. Uh, I, I live a clean life. Uh, and so my dad not being in the home uh, didn't affect me like it affects a lot of other men. I didn't have any uh, uh, anger or dis uh, uh, discontentment uh, because my dad was not uh, there. But I saw him a couple of times a week. You see what I'm saying? We did go to the movie, me and my mom and my sisters and stuff like that. And even uh, my older sister that uh, was not uh, that was not her dad, he took her as well. He did things for her as well. And so... Uh, but some people are affected differently when the father is not in the home, but it just didn't impact me uh, that way. So, so listen, folks, I, uh, uh, I, I know that children with absent fathers can suffer long term damage. It, it, it happens. Uh, and they're most likely uh, to end up in poverty uh, or drop out of school or become addicted to drugs, uh, have a child out of wedlock. Uh, I've had two children out of wedlock. But, you know, it's not because my father wasn't in the home. I know people who have fathers that were in the home had kids out of wedlock. So right. there are exceptions to the rule. So, and, and some of them may end up in, in prison. You know, that's a known study. Uh, at, at the national level, 18.4 million children are living without uh, their bi biological father. Now, uh, 
personally, I think whether it's a biological father or uh, uh, a father that's not the biological father, as long as you have a father who is training you in the ways of the Lord, or if he's not a believer, he's training you good moral values, I think that's still a good thing, uh, better than not having a father at all. But when it's all said and done, when those children get of age, they're going to do what they want to do anyway. Now, I see a lot of children committing crimes, right, in the streets, all over the city, in the urban cities, all throughout the country. And I hear people a lot of times, they didn't have a good upbringing. Well, that's not necessarily true. I'm quite sure, Mike, you know people who had great upbringings and in, who are in jail right now. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and that's, so part the the, that's part of the reason that they're in jail. That's part of the reason that they're in jail, right? <laughs> you know, because when, when you when you give a child too much, you understand what I'm saying? Because you're overcompensating for some kind of deficiency in you as a parent. You understand? You can spoil the child. And, and you know the word. You know the word. You, you ain't going to kill your child if you discipline them. You understand what I'm saying? You spare the ride to spoil the child. Right. So, yes, yeah, a lot right. of friends who had more than me coming up, but they had no structure in their home because, like I said, their parents may have thought it was just all about giving them things. You know how it is. When it's time for them to drive, they gave them cars. You know, stuff like that. So I had to earn everything that I had. You understand? So you have a great appreciation for things that you go earn versus somebody giving you things. So parenting is a slippery slope. You know that, man. You can do too much yeah. or you can do too little. You never know. Yeah, yeah. But I also uh, uh, believe that you can't blame the parents for everything, especially if the parents did their job. Now, now no. uh, in, Pro in Proverbs 22 and 6, it says, train up your child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart. Yeah, now, not what depart that means, no doubt. What that means, what that means, that child is not going to fall. It, 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 the child is still going to fall. The child is going to uh, perhaps go astray. But that child knows the pathway to return, just like the prodigal son. The prodigal son uh, took his dad inheritance early and went and spent it on prostitutes and wives his living. But the thing is, once yeah, he became yeah, once he became destitute and he said, man, I have squandered all of the wealth and, and now I'm working uh, cleaning pigs. He came to himself. It said he came to himself. He recognized that all the things, all the more things that his father taught him of the child was right and he was wrong. So first it said he repented to God. Heavenly Father, first he repented to God because when we sin and we get out of order, we have to repent to God because we displeased God when we violate his laws. And then it said he came home and repented and asked his God for his, his father, his, his earthly father for forgiveness. And his father received him with open arms. And so that scripture saying that he will not depart from it if he never returns back to the ways of uh, morality and the ways of the Lord, that means he was never saved. If he returns, that means that's a sign he was because God was calling him back and he returned. So, uh, man, listen, uh, absentee fathers disproportionately affects black children and nearly a quarter of American children live in a father absent home. The study says that 48.1% of black children live with their mothers, while 39.7% of black children live with their father and mothers. Mike, what are your thoughts about these statistics? Well, first and foremost, Rodney, I'd like to know where that study came from. You know, who conducted it? Because let's, let's also remember, bro, that this world loves to paint black people in a certain light as well. Okay, because yeah, show sure. me the stories or the headlines. Show me the stories or the headlines of how many of us are in our homes. You see what I'm saying? I guarantee you, you can probably, you can find it. But I guarantee you, you can find more negative about us than positive. So here it is. Yes. I just want to know. Yeah, I just want to know when I when I look at polls and data and things like that, I go into where that research and data came from. So um, if those are the numbers according to, I don't know, somebody non-black who made that study, I don't know if I can trust it or not. I'm just being I'm just being transparent, brother, because like I said, we have yeah, to yeah. be careful. We have to be careful about what we consume, be it food for our bodies or food for our minds. You see, so uh, if those are the numbers, 
you know, I would like to see the flip side. So I'm, I'm trying to deal in the positive there because um, even though this show is titled uh, in a way that someone could look upon it negatively, I like to have a positive spin on it, man, for it to be the other side of it as well. I mean, I, I'm a test. You're a testament to that. I'm a testament to that. I'm a married father in the home. You dig what I'm saying? And there are many of us out here, but we're not getting the same publicity and recognition that the flip side is because bad news travels fast. You know. So, brother, if yeah. that's if that's a true poll, I'll study it later. But I want to know uh, what the numbers are on the positive side of us doing the right thing. Yeah, well, you know, uh, of course, you have, uh, there's a lot of positive uh, things that are going on in the black community as it relates to uh, fathers and mothers, even uh, homes without fathers, because uh, when there is no father, the mother has to be the father and mother. Now, my mom was the father and mother, and, and trust me, she was the judge, the jury, and the executioner, for sure. <laughs> and, and and again, we I grew up in church. I went to church twice a week. Mama was the law. You see what I'm saying? I never hung out on the street corner. I never had a desire within me as a child. I didn't want to hang out uh, on the street corner and smoke and drink. And mama said, don't hang out on those corners, son. Those corners, son, because it's not good news. And she was right. It's not good news because I know a few people that have gotten killed standing on street corners, drinking and smoking. I didn't want that lifestyle. So mama planted the word of God. And, and the greatest thing my mama could have done for me was introduce me uh, to the Lord at an early age. And, and even though I went astray in the military and even in my 20s and, and early 30s, you know, I knew I was wrong. But you know what? Just like the prodigal son, I returned back to the fold. You see what I'm saying? I asked God for forgiveness. I said, Lord, clean me up. I don't like this lifestyle that I'm living. So I want to be different than what's in the streets. And so that's why I would never go back in those streets. You see what I'm saying? So that's a positive uh, testament. Uh, and I give all credit to my mom because she was there. And you know what? I took care of my mom the last 13 years of her life and I enjoyed every minute of it and I wouldn't have changed a thing. And so, man, you know, uh, we, we know, Mike, uh, that there, there can be long-term consequences uh, of growing up without a father. Uh, and many males, especially when they, they get into that dating phase, like you stated for yourself, uh, you know, it, it can be tough, you know, because you can uh, revert back to the times that you uh, say, well, my, da my dad wasn't in the house and you can be become angry and you don't know how to deal with a, a, a woman because you were never taught. So uh, what advice would, would you give a man who was not uh, did not have a father in the home uh, who's having a hard time uh, relating to a woman that he's interested in? I know you have a, a female audience uh, and, and by, I by no means want to offend them. Uh, I want them to listen with with a clear mind and clear ears, okay? Another mm -hmm. one of the problems, Rodney, uh, in a matriarchal society, you know, uh, or even a matriarchal family, um, is that the long-term absence of elder men, okay, when a certain uh, demographic of men in that tribe be get older, and they become the leaders of the family. A lot of times the women in the family, not intentionally, but subconsciously, are not willing to accept them in leadership roles because maybe their fathers were absent. I had an incident happen with me, Rodney. And, and like I said, I don't have a problem telling the world my age, God blessed me a lot of years on this planet. Uh, so I'm 56 years old. So in my family, as a man, I am now one of the elders. Okay, I'm one of the ones who can direct the young men. So I had an incident. We were at a family gathering. And you know how this newer generation is, Rodney. You got the one family member. I won't even say what he's how he's related to. Me. But he, the one family member had a hoodie on in the house, Rodney. Like this, you know. All the elders around, you got a hood on. Nobody was saying anything, even the female elders. So, of course, I, I couldn't take it no more, Rodney. So I said, hey, man, I need you to take your hood off. Nobody in here is covered up. Now, Rodney, before I go on telling this story, you remember growing up, your uncles or whoever told you to do something, what did you do? You did it. 
There you go. Without question, whether you agree with it or not. Correct? You just did. So I told him, look, you need to take your hood off. I don't feel like it is what he told me. So now I'm advancing to, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. So my mother, whom I love, who is, who is my queen, I love her, that's my ace. She chimes in and protects him saying, he said he didn't feel like it. Rodney, I was so disappointed, man, and I was so upset. Because now here I am, I'm an elder now. And you one mm -hmm. of the OG elders. You're supposed to back me. You're not supposed to back this foolish behavior. And I call it foolish behavior because it's disrespectful. None of us men were covered up. So I fast forward to maybe a week later. My mother comes by um, with an olive branch. I wasn't mad at her, but she kind of felt I wasn't feeling the situation. So her and my, my auntie come over and I had to explain to her. I said, mom, this has been such a matriarchal family. Y'all women have run things so long. It's been drilled into you, the, the absence of men in this family that y'all don't think we're men. Y'all still think we're children. You know what I mean? We're grown men. And we have to take the reins of this family because I guess what? If it's something that requires something physical, if we gotta defend somebody or somebody gotta move a couch, you call on the men for that. You understand what I'm saying? I said, but when it comes to instructing the younger men behind us, step out of the way and be quiet, please. You know what I said to my mom with all due respect? And she actually agreed, Rodney. My mother agreed because she's a Christian woman and she's quick to admit her faults just like most people should be able to do. But she definitely told me, she said, son, you're right. I, I just didn't see it that way because how this family set up. I'm like, yeah. I said, we're in our 50s now. The majority of us who were boys, we're 50s now. We run this family. So you ladies have to step aside and help us in the way that God set it up. Yeah, brother. So yeah. Um, so to my, to my ladies out there on, on my brother Mayfield's uh, platform, uh, sometimes we need to help in you humbling yourself and stepping aside and letting us do what men are supposed to do, especially when it comes for the young men in our family. I'm not faulting you for anything, but in a matriarchal setup, and it's very hard for women to kind of relinquish that power and that authority to men. That's all I'm saying. So, and I love you sisters, but sometimes you gotta step out of the way. Because like I said, if, if that boy gets, if he gets too out of pocket, you're, you're calling our phones to come straighten him out. And we shouldn't be the disciplinarians every time something goes wrong. If you let us incorporate our wisdom and knowledge into their lives, the less phone calls we'll get from you to straighten them out. Guaranteed. I, I concur with that, man, because you know what? God's design has always been for the man to be the head of the household in, in marriage. Now, God never called a man to be the head of the household in a fornicated relationship, uh, but only in marriage. But we know that uh, there are some things that the Bible says that even people who are unsaved do, and it's a natural instinct for a man to want to assume that headship role, whether he's a Christian and, and, and married, or whether he's uh, living in sin and living in fornicating, uh, a fornicating relationship with a woman. His natural inclination is to be uh, the protector and, and the head of that household. So yeah, man, I agree with you wholeheartedly, man, and, and good thing that your mom recognized uh, that situation uh, seems like when parents get older, they start to become a little softer. You know, they beat the beat the yes. hell out of us. <laughs> they beat the hell out of us. But when we have, when, when my, my 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 sisters have grandkids, uh, then she becomes a softy. You know what I'm saying? She don't grab the switch. I know. She don't grab. The, she don't grab the belt. <laughs> And, and, and other and other things that I won't mention, shoes and, and everything right. else. So, uh, but then, you know, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, thank thank God for mothers. Thank God for strong mothers, man. Uh, yes, who, yes. Uh, just stood in the gap even when there were not fathers in the home, man. And and, and for the guys and even the uh, women that turned out to be uh, good people because their mothers uh, did their job, you know. Uh, it's a great thing. It's a great chest pump. So, now, um, Mike, 
Do you believe uh, there's a correlation between a boy that grows up in a home without a father uh, and his becoming an abuser of women in a relationship? Uh, it's kind of a tricky question, brother, because that abusing of a female might have came from a household with a father in it. Okay. Because yeah, they yeah, you, you what they see. Yeah. You understand? So I can't I can't blame it on I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't single handedly kinda match that up with uh being a human abuser. To me, uh you just have a weak hand period when you do that. Yeah. You understand? So regardless of where you got it from, you just soft because ninety nine point nine percent of women abusers will not fight a man. They're the ultimate suckers. They will never fight a man. So I wouldn't even blame that to on having uh, an absentee father in your home because you got that from somewhere. You got yeah. that from somewhere. You understand? Be it a, an uncle that beat up your auntie or depending on what your socioeconomic neighborhood was like, you saw pips knock chicks down or you just saw male or female abuse, period. But you see female or male abuse too, so it's not a one-way street. But we're talking about absentee fathers, and I get it. But uh, no, Roddy, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really tie that in to absentee uh, fathers, man. Because like I said, you could have generation of, of wife beaters in the same family, and they just hand down that nasty trait to whatever next generation. Hand it down through the bloodline. That that yeah, proclivity. You better believe it. You better believe it. Yeah. You better believe it. Now, do you do you know of any men that grew up uh, with a father in the home uh, that still had major relationship issues? Yeah, but you know, but what I think is just um, it's the connectivity, man. I mean, I think both of us have been in enough relationships where. You got along with one female better than you did another. And then when you yeah. when you're not getting along with the next female, you kind of wonder why you left the la last female that you got along with. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, you yeah. always revert yeah, back the grass to that. Is not, <laughs> so, yeah. The grass is not always <laughs> great on the other side. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So yeah, brother, you know. <laughs> but I just think that's a connectivity thing. You know what I mean? I mean, I think yeah. it plays a part as far as your upbringing, no doubt about it. But I think it's a connectivity thing. Um, successful relationships uh, between men and women, uh, and I'm saying between men and women because that's really all I'm familiar with. Um, so successful relationships between men and women, is, and a lot of it is based on commonality. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if you're a fella, if you're a fella who likes sports and you start dating a woman that likes sports just as much as you, I mean, you kind of like fall in love just based on that commonality. You understand? If, you are, if you're a woman who loves art and you find a fella that loves art, that's a connectivity thing. You know, that's kind of, yeah. you know, so it's hard to explain um, how the other intangibles come into it. You know what I mean? But no, nah, I don't I don't I don't have any friends personally. You know, I don't have an, an anecdotal re example of a friend of mine. Bad -ass who have relationship issues because we all have relationship issues and I think it's just a connectivity thing and and knowing what people like and what they don't like um and what one thing my grandmother always used to say about females she said women know how to push your button son and she said if you don't want somebody to know how to get you don't don't let them know where you hide <laughs> that's a good one, man. That's a that's a good one. That's that's wisdom. That's wisdom. Yeah, uh, because hey, I wish I would have known that. Huh? I wish I would have actually known that. You know, before Granny said it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah well, it, it takes time to uh, get burned several times before you say, "Hey, you know what? I see what she was coming. What she was coming from." So, yeah. hey, man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Mike, 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 it seems like uh, you have uh, a passion for fatherless homes, for boys in fatherless homes, man. Uh, why are you so passionate about this? Was it because uh, you grew up in a home without a father? Is that why you have a passion for this? Uh, it's, it's 
it's a layered topic, right? Again, what you what you mentioned, yeah, that definitely plays into it. Um, and 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 what happens, man, is, is so many unresolved issues fester. You know, they fester, and and with our people, with black people, African American, however you want to address us, um, particularly in our male population, we don't believe in therapy. You know what mm. I mean? That black people in general don't believe in therapy, man. Um, not only don't believe in it, but in many circumstances, economically cannot afford therapy. You see, so these men or these boys that grow into men with these unresolved issues, um, that these combustible unresolved issues, you know, where, um, you know, you see somebody on your job just go off, man. You know what I mean? And you know, like, what's 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 wrong with him? See what I'm saying? Unresolved issues, man, or things that you let linger too long in your psyche or in your spirit. You understand? So, um, I have a passion because, like I said, I think this the, the world has their their image of us, which which is always inaccurate in my in, in my estimation. You know, they the world black people are the only race of people in this world that the world tells us how we are you understand they don't know us they don't know the beauty of us man so that being my head, that's why i'm so passionate about trying to change the lives of young people particularly young men not that i'm forgetting our our, our, our princesses but you know as well as i do rodney these girls are running circles around these young boys academically and everything else we're falling behind a drastic rate, man. So, yeah, my heart bleeds, man. But I know that if unresolved issues go unresolved, man, they become, they explode, man. And, and, and somebody makes a wrong, and it doesn't have to be a violent outburst or nothing like that. It could be bad decision making. You know, it can be irrational thoughts. It could be spousal abuse. Or it could be a drug abuse or an alcohol abuse. It could unresolved issues turn into something my brother so that's why i'm so uh passionate about uh trying to help man i mean that's just my thing i i, I love to help people uh because i come from a very charitable family even though we didn't have a lot we helped a lot of people who had less than us all right all right man hey man that's uh listen i applaud you for that man for having that type of passion uh i know that it's uh much needed in the black community Oh man, easy brother. Each one, reach one, teach one. You understand? Uh, volunteering is one of the greatest vehicles, man, for, for communication uh, for different generations of people. Um, you know, you have situations where, uh, like you, I was raised in church. So you still have a, a good percentage in a lot of churches, even though the black church, the Baptist church, you know, which I'm from, uh, has always been female heavy. You still have uh, gentlemen on the deacon board. You know what I mean? You have uh, the ushers. You, you know, you have so many uh, male influences, man. Uh, there's there. Um, of course, you can get involved in sports. You know, you there's so many things you can do. But I think we have to really kind of wean ourselves off of uh, pushing sports, especially for black kids, because it's unrealistic. All they're talking about is being rappers or either some kind of sports <laughs> figure, but I didn't know that. And we have to really uh, diversify their upbringing with imagery. You know what I mean? So if you know a black doctor, you know, pull his coat, have him come talk to some kids. If you know a black dentist, you know a firefighter, you know a cop, you know what I mean? You know that there's so many walks of life um, that are more accessible and realistic to these kids that's not being pushed to them. So that's how I think black men can do the the greatest service to the, the young black boys of their community or wherever they choose is being present and being real and being transparent, not too graphic, because they don't need to know all of our, our faults. Uh, but we do need to share with a certain age groups of uh, which direction they should go, especially if we've walked that path already, Rodney. I can't tell Rodney Mayfield nothing I haven't done. Yeah, I can't advise you on nothing I haven't done. That's foolishness. So we have to be transparent, real, and uh, sometimes the truth hurts, man. If a kid is messing up and you got that relationship with the kid, man, tell him he effing up. 
You can tell him that because the world's been coddling him as it is and he's been getting away with stuff. So sometimes you got to hear from somebody that tough love thing is a real thing. Especially hearing from somebody who has experienced those things themselves and uh, they were able to escape from uh, getting into a terrible predicament and they're trying to warn you. Uh, listen, have a plan B. Don't just think you're going to be a rapper. What if that doesn't work? What if you're not a football player? Right. You got to have a plan B. Hey, you got to diversify your portfolio because if you do not, you're going to be in deep chemistry for sure. You're going to be in deep chemistry. Yeah, sure, yeah. And they're not giving that, Rodney. Our community is, is at fault for that. You know what I mean? Because you got a, a kid that's, a, you know, want to be a good basketball player in high school and all that, you know, might get some college offers. Nobody's emphasizing his education to him. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah, wants him to be the few. next big thing. Yeah, very few people are emphasizing education. There are some, but not, uh, you know, that's just how we not are. As we, we, we want the We want the quick, the quick uh, recording artist money and uh, football star money and, yeah. and uh, yeah, sports yeah. figure money. But uh, listen, uh, I have uh, I was told by uh, an old wise white man, he said, you can put a little aside in your banking account over a long period of time to be a millionaire. Just putting three or four hundred dollars a pay period away for 30 or 40 years, you'll be a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? And never touch it. You know, sort of like the uh, thrift savings plan or a 401k plan. You know, let it build up and mm -hmm. gain interest. Uh, and, and, and we don't even do that as a community, man. Uh, but I think we probably, I'll, I'll probably get off off topic. But uh, do you currently or have you in the past performed any uh, volunteer work? If so, please share with my audience. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, for years uh, before I got married, uh, I was a little league football coach, little league basketball coach. Uh, I was a, a, a tutor through literacy volunteers of Western New York here in Buffalo, uh, where you went to the schools and helped kids with reading. Um, I'm a voracious reader. I love to read um, because I was I was brought up reading. You know, when whenever we we said the dreaded words around our grandmother's house, Granny, I'm bored. She pointed us right to the encyclopedia. She said, <laughs> "Grab grab whatever <laughs> grab whatever letter you want," and she said, "I will be quizzing you about what's in that book. So sit down and read." So uh, voracious reader, brother. So yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, when I retired from my, my former job, I went to the school system uh, to just be a presence uh, in the schools for the young black boys. But uh, that was that was very disappointing, man, because what we are talking about, this very topic, uh, is what I had to battle with. Uh, the fatherless boys, just not knowing how to respect a man, not knowing how to respond to a man's direction. Rodney, it was, it was heartbreaking. You know what I mean? And and then I had to make what we call a business decision. I said, Michael, you can try to save some of these kids in this type of environment and risk losing everything you work for. Because I'm not going to be disrespected verbally like they did, right? Yeah, like they would talk to certain teachers and you know, I had a run in with one kid, he was talking just too reckless to me. So I had to come home and told my wife, I said, baby, I gotta serve the community in another way. I said, because we will lose everything if I go back into that environment of unchecked disrespect. You understand? But I didn't give up on them. I'm in the process now, uh, uh, going through the job process, interview process, and background investigation at this point, which will come back clean uh, for a place here in Buffalo called the Center for Employment Opportunities, in which you help people who are coming home from incarceration find gearful employment, job skills, life skills. So the position is a life skills coach. Uh, they like what I had to say. They like my resume. They like my, uh, you know, my volunteer work. So they, you know, decided to take a chance on me. So we'll see how it goes, brother. God willing, I think I could thrive in a job like that because you're talking about people who more than likely are fathers and yeah. mothers who are coming home and have to pick up the pieces. So. Uh, no one got where they are without help, Brother Rodney. You know that. So um, in that capacity, I think I can still serve our people. All right. And you're right. You can't right. pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You need some assistance sometimes. For sure. Absolutely. Well, hey, 
Are there any final thoughts that you would like to leave with my audience, especially the men and perhaps the females who are single mothers uh, that may be interested in your thoughts pertaining to this topic? All right, to, to both groups, I would say, Rodney, uh, in, in the word, it says seek wise counsel. You know what I mean? Exactly. Seek wise counsel. So for the men, uh, humble yourselves, man. Don't be ashamed to ask for help, whatever capacity that's in. You understand? Like I said, you can call your friend to move a couch with you, but if you're struggling mentally, go get help. You're not weak. You're not less than. None of that. Because like I said, if you grew up without a father like I did, a lot of times unresolved issues will come back to bite you. Ladies, if you know good, strong men, line them up with your children. Do you understand? In some type of capacity, particularly the boys. And it doesn't have to be anybody with some kind of title. It doesn't have to be Dr. So-and-so or Professor So-and-so or this and that. It might be a man on your street that you see mowing his lawn, you know, taking care of his house. That's a man thing. That's something we have to grow to learn when we become homeowners, is we take care of that house. So seek wise counsel for the brothers and the sisters out there, okay? And ladies, not jumping on you, but if you know a good man, it's particularly in your family, if he lays out instruction for the ones behind him, particularly the boys, shut them out of the way. Because when it comes to the young ladies, we step out of the way and let you handle it, okay? But healing has to come in our community, Rodney, and the first thing we can do is raise children together. I think that would drastically change every situation in our community all over the country. And it doesn't matter if you're married or not. Raise your children together. That's all I got, Rodney. All right, man. Hey, I, I'd like to thank you for coming on, man. That's a, a, a great, uh, analogy, and I think that uh, the men that watch this show, as well as the women, uh, can take something positive uh, from what you just said. Well, brother, Dr. Mike, I'd like to thank you for coming on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show and sharing your thoughts and views and your passions about the topic of fatherless homes and its impact on boys turned to men in future relationships. Uh, I hope to have you back on another topic in the near future. Let's give Dr. Mike Hicks, a round of applause and thank you for coming on the Straight Brothers Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Thanks again, Mike, for coming on the show. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Thank you. If you've liked this topic discussion in this video, like and share this video link on your social media platform. God bless you. <laughs>